Welcome back guys. In this video I'm going to show you how you can transfer a file, more specifically a picture, through socket communication in Python 3. What you're going to need to be able to complete this video is two Raspberry Pis. Here I have the receiving computer, the computer that will receive the picture, and here I have the computer that will take the picture and then send it through Ethernet to the receiving computer. So that's all you need. This video is building upon a series of videos where we have been trying to catch a cookie thief using the Raspberry Pi and a whole bunch of different features and so I already have some scripts pre-written and I will be building upon these scripts. Uh, these scripts are downloadable in the description. Um, you're going to want to navigate to the receiving computer. This is the one that will be storing the file for you and this one I call the GrowPy in my particular uh, situation and you're going to want to open up cookie server 2.py we're going to be building off of that one there so first thing i'm going to do is save this file under a new name cookie server 3 now we can get rid of some of the things that we have in this file that we're not going to need anymore that we used in our trivial example get rid of the stored value get rid of the functions get and repeat under the data transfer function that we have here, we can delete get and repeat if you want, or if you're really lazy like I am going to be right here because those don't do anything anymore. We're going to create a new one where our command is going to be equal to store. So the idea is, is we're going to send a command that says store, and then it's going to know what to do, and it's going to store that file. So the command store, if we were to receive it, we're going to want to print store command received time to save a picture we're then going to execute a new function that we're gonna to have to write called store file and into store file we're going to pass the second part of our data message so this is when we send in the command we have we split it we get our first section of the command which is store and then the second section and the second section is going to be a file path and name and that's how we're going to know what to uh, store our file as so once that's done we will say our reply is equal to file stored. So now what we need to do is create a new function called store file. So I'm going to scroll back up here and above data transfer I'm going to create our new function called store file and into it we're going to take our data message uh, second part of it. Or better yet instead of calling it data message let's just call it file path because it prevents us from being confused. So we're going to be sending into it our file path and our file path is going to be uh, the second part of our data message that we get. So storing the file, the first thing we're going to want to do is open up a file. So our pick file that we're going to be opening up, we're going to say the pick file is going to be open the file path, whatever that is, and we're going to want to write bytes to it. And that's what the WB stands for. So we have now opened up a instance of this imaginary file path that doesn't really exist yet because we haven't written anything to it. Um, so we have opened the file and now we're gonna actually start to receive the file. So we're gonna say the first chunk of our pick is equal to from the connection receiving our buffer size of 1024. So we're gonna receive uh, 1024 bytes and then we're going to say while the pick is like still incoming because likely our picture is bigger than a K uh, while our picture is still incoming we're going to print uh, receiving picture still and then we will say um, we're going to want to write to our pick file so our pick file we're going to write and what are we going to write we're going to write the section of pick that we have and then we're going to say that we're going to renew pick with a new connection receive of 1024 and then when that is all done we're going to close down our pick file so what's happening here is we're opening up a picture well we're opening up a file we don't know it's a picture yet um, 
the file path is going to be like blah 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 dot jpeg um, we then start receiving and we receive increments of one byte and while there is still data coming in because this is a streaming connection we're going to be writing that data and we're just going to keep on writing 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 until there's nothing left to receive and then we're going to close down the file so let's give this a save so now the server end that is to receive the file has all been set up the next thing we're going to want to do is navigate over to our computer that will be taking the picture. So in this case, this is the one I've been working on all this while called PlayPy. And I created a file called cookieclient2.py in an earlier video that acts as the client uh, for connecting to our server. So we're going to write this file. We're not going to write over the file. We're going to create a new file called cookieclient3 based off of cookieclient2 so that we still have access to the cookie client too. And then just for curiosity, we're going to import a new module from time. We're going to import time. I want to see how long it takes for a file to actually transfer. And you might be interested in this as well. So you get an idea of your transfer rates. Um, now that I'm connected up to my router, my host address will change. And this is the host of your server. So whatever the IP address of your server is. The port that you choose has to continue to match whatever port you chose on your server end, which I believe is 5560. I'm going to create a new function here. I'm going to create two new functions, actually. Um, we're going to continue to need to set up our socket just like before, and we're going to have to have our send receive and our transmit if you want them. Um, but we're going to need a new function that is called send pick. And into send pick, we're going to pass it our socket because we need that as well as the file path of our picture um, so that we can send the file path over to our uh, server. So just because I like printing things because it really helps with any sort of debugging that you might have, let's print the file path, make sure we're sending the right file path. And then what we're going to do is we're going to open up the picture. So the idea is, is we've taken the picture and now we want to send it. So we've taken the picture, we're going to open up the picture, we're going to read the picture, we're then going to send segments of that picture over to the server, and that server is going to receive those segments and write it to one file. So our picture that we want to send, we're going to have to open up the file path, that is the picture, and this time instead of writing bytes, you can guess it, we're going to read bytes. So we've opened up our picture, and we're going to want to send it in chunks. So I'm going to say a chunk, is going to be reading the um, file and we can how big of a read do we want let's go for 1024 because why not uh, we are then going to want to send that section of the picture so I'm going to in, have to encode it and because I'm storing um, not storing because I'm also sending the command store I have to encode it as a string and my file path is also going to be in the form of a string so we're gonna so we're gonna send the command store and the file path and when that's received on the server end it then executes the function that will then start to uh, receive the actual picture as well, I want to see how long it takes. So we're going to say t is equal to time, so we know. And while chunk. So while there is still something in the chunk, we're going to want to print send sending picture. And then we can say send the chunk. And then we're going to need a new chunk. And our new chunk is going to be reading the next 1024 of the um, picture of the pick. So once that is done, so once chunk has been exhausted and there's nothing more because we have read all of the pick, we're then going to close the pick, otherwise we risk corrupting the file. We can print a dummy set statement that says done sending. And finally, because I am curious, we can say elapsed time is equal to plus string time. So our current time, oh, 
lapse time is equal to string time minus t, which was our original time. So that will give us how much time we have in seconds. So now we know how long it took. And then I'm going to close our socket and return the message done sending again. OK, so let's give this a save. Now, this is a trivial example. It won't like leave the socket up and running like it did before because this is nice and quick. And I want to demonstrate this in a short period of time so I don't make a video that's too long winded again. The last thing that we're going to need to do is how, how do we how do we execute this send pick function? We are going to have to create a new function. Just like before, I created a transmit function. I'm going to create a new function here called backup. And what are we going to back up? We're going to back up the file path. We're going to back up the picture. So what backup is, is we just set up the socket. And then we say our response is simply send picks. And we pass in the uh, socket and the file path. And finally, we return our response. So similar to transmit, except this time we're backing up a picture. So that's the idea. Now, let's go back to our cookie client three and fix that typo I made where in backup, where instead of saying response, we say response, right? So let's give that a save because that might give us some trouble if we were to execute this making that typo, right? Backup is the one that actually does stuff. So we could have included it here, but because I want to keep it, keep the client file separate from our main file because you don't want to incorporate it all in one file. Um, I'm going to go to our cookie main two file here and open that bad boy up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to save over cookie main two as cookie main three. Just so that we keep an archive of all the files and what we're doing. All right, and because we changed cookie client two to cookie, cookie to client three, we're gonna have to uh, update that. And we're no longer gonna import transmit, we're gonna import backup. And the only other thing we're gonna have to adjust here is we go down to our while true loop that we have at the end. All these functions aren't gonna be doing anything, but I'm gonna need them to actually put the project together. Uh, we're no longer going to be monitoring our temperature and no longer are we going to be sleeping. But we will have to take a picture. And instead of going, so we're still gonna need some of those functions there. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to say our current time is equal to get time. And that's this function here. So we know what the time is. Uh, we're going to create our picture name and our picture name is going to be uh, from capture image, which will get us to take our image into which we pass our current time and our pick path, which I believe is a hard coded value up at the top. Pick path. Yep. Yeah. So that's a hard coded value up at the top. Oh, also on your server, you're going to want to create this folder. Uh, because this is the folder into which we will uh, save our images. So on your server, that is the receiving computer, you're also going to have to create a desktop on your desktop a cookie slash images folder. So we pass in our um, pick path and then dummy statement took a picture. And then we're going to create our complete path. And this is going to be a combination of our pick path plus our pick name. So it's it's the file path pretty much. And we're going to print the complete path so we can compare it, make sure that it is correct. And then finally, we're going to back up passing in our complete path. And when that is done, we can say like print everything should be backed up now. And then finally, we're going to break out of our uh, while true loops. So let's give this a save. OK, so the first thing we're going to want to do is set up our server. So go to the Raspberry Pi that is going to be the receiving uh, of that's going to be receiving the picture. We're going to want to navigate to the cookie directory on the desktop. And we're going to using Python 3 want to execute cookie server 3.py. 
So it set up a socket and it bound com complete. I still didn't fix that. Um, socket bind is complete. On the Raspberry Pi that is going to be taking the picture, again, we're going to want to navigate to our desktop cookie folder and we are going to want to execute cookie main three dot pi. Peace. So it took a picture, sending the picture, everything should be backed up by now. So in 0.68 seconds, Let's just scroll up here and see what we've got here. So it was sent in the picture. This is the direct, so we have taken a picture, took a picture. This is the printing of the file path. And again, we printed it again uh, in a different script, just to make sure it all matched up. We sent the picture a bunch of times, uh, like chunks of the picture, I should say. It finished, took 0.68 seconds. Everything should be backed up by now. On the receiving end, Store command received, time to take a picture. We open the file, receive chunks of the file, and data has been sent. I think that's like a relic of when we like send an okay or something like that. Anyways, uh, moving over here where I can actually see it. So GrowPy, this is the computer that backs up the images. This is the receiving end. Go into the cookie images folder. We can see we have a picture. Cool, right? And on the PlayPy, which is the one that took the picture, desktop cookie images, we should also see one written today. There you go. Cool, eh? Same fit picture on both computers. Same file name, same picture. So there you go. That's how you can use a Raspberry Pi to back up a file, for example, a picture. In the next video, I'm going to show you how this all comes together. I am going to put together the complete security system that uses the GPIO, uh, the picture taking, the motion detection, the socket communication with the temperature sensor, uh, the analog temperature sensor, um, going to light up LEDs based on whether or not the temperature gets too cold or too hot, and we're going to take a picture when we finally catch the cookie thief, and we're going to back it up in case the cookie thief gets violent and destroys the Raspberry Pi that's connected to it. So I'll see you in that video. Have yourself a good one.